Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello, everyone. Once again, welcome to another episode of Teach Me Tech. My name is Pete Quist. This is the show where we take new and interesting and often complex ideas and tools online. We break them down and make them, make them as easy as possible for you to implement into your business. And today, I'm joined by the lovely Laurel Gray from GetDigitalFlow.com. Laurel, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me back again we are t we're in the middle of something here we're talking about how to get more out of calendly now in the last episode we took a look at how to get started with calendly hopefully people caught that episode today we're going to take a look at how to get more out of the tool you ready for it i'm ready okay great to have you on board again it's always good to have a co-host two quick things before we get started today the first one is i want you to follow along as everyone knows that watches teach me tech these sessions are highly practical if you have a second screen or device computer tablet maybe you can actually get involved and implement what we talk about right now in your own business which is very cool the second thing is we want you to ask and share jump on your favorite social media platform and use the hashtag teach me tech now, once you use that hashtag, we'll be on social media ourselves, but also the whole community will be on there talking about things that they've learned and discovered with Calendly, maybe some challenges that they've had, or maybe you want to share some ideas or tips. Doesn't matter. Jump online. Teach me tech is the hashtag. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover on today's episode. First of all, we're going to take a look at the, a quick recap of Calendly and why we recommend it for your business. What happens after your invitee makes a booking, which we got up to in the last episode? How to add team members and availability to a single booking calendar? How to choose the correct event type for your business? How to schedule events that have multiple attendees? Getting Calendly to work with your WordPress website or your website in general? How to invite people to book with you through Calendly? ideas to integrate the booking process into your current business. And finally, ta -ta -ta, some examples of how we use Calendly in our own businesses. So that's all coming up today. I guess on that note, we should get started. So let's take a look at a quick recap of Calendly and why we recommend it for your business. Laurel Gray from GetDigitalFlow.com. Take it over. Why do we recommend it for people in their business? Well, Probably when you were first watching that first episode, it was a little bit kind of clunky in your mind about how you were going to get people to work with you. And you're not alone. A lot of people come to me and they go, oh, isn't that a bit weird to ask someone to book in time with me? I'm not that important, right? Um, but really, you are. And it's not even totally about you, in fact. It's often about showing respect for that person that's booking in time with you and showing them that you value their time. Because imagine, I'm sure you've been in this situation before, you want to make a consultation with someone, maybe you're meant to meet up for 30 minutes and have a chat about an upcoming project, and you have to email back and forth 500 times in order to find the right date, the right time, the right location. Really, you can actually build that into your processes and your standards within your business so that you allow people to book in that time in advance with you. So the great thing is this isn't just for, and we notice this people using the hashtag teach me tech, this isn't just for businesses which are service-based businesses. This can actually be an internal system that you have as well. Yes, definitely. You can use this internally within your own team to book meetings or training sessions or with your customers or potential customers. Or maybe that popularly you need it for people to book into your social life. That's right. As Laurel I've never does. used it. I've never done that before. She has. Okay, so uh, any other reasons why we recommend it for businesses? <laughs> well, um, I guess it sort of starts from the inside out, right? So the more aware you are of your time, the better you're going to be at using it. So this whole process of putting a calendaring system in place is great for getting you to think about how you spend your whole day. Now, this is not a lesson on productivity. We can go and talk forever about that, right? But we do recommend that you evaluate all the things that you're doing throughout your day and add in things such as travel time, break time, lunch time, and other time for administration, for example, so that you can make sure that you can actually fit all this stuff that you have to do into your day. 
if you don't respect your own time, no one else will. Yep, that's the moral of the story. Mm. So uh, what happens after your invitee makes a booking? All right, this is something that we didn't completely cover off in the first example. No, there was a few little gaps that we had that we need to fill, fill off, that we need to fill. Yeah, it's one of those things that you probably don't think of until you completely go through the process of setting up your first event. And hopefully you've been following along and you've done that already back at home. Okay, so let's pretend that an invitee has made a booking through Calendly with us. Uh, the question is, what happens afterwards? Right. So if we go back into our event types and we click on that little cog, and it will open up the in entire event. And uh, it's just showing here the one that we gave before for the initial consultation for 10 minutes with Belinda Rothschild, coach to the stars. <laughs> all right, and we made it all the way through our setup process. We got all of the time booked in. We set up our reminders, if you remember, the questions for the invitee. And the last little bit was what we didn't cover, which was adding custom links. So it says here, use this section to display custom links after the event is confirmed. For example, you might link to your payment provider and collect payments for this event. Now this is where we really want to encourage you to think about how you might use this in your own business. I know a lot of business owners who are currently charging nothing for really valuable initial consultations. And they might even go for 30, 40, an hour, 30 or 40 minutes or up to an hour for free when really they could be charging for that time. Mm, it's a great strategy for businesses too, that uh, initial consultations that you're currently giving away for free, quite often the people that are booking in for those consultations might treat them with disrespect because they're not actually paying money for them. You might find that you increase your conversion rates by getting people to pay for those initial consultations because there is a financial value to them in those. Exactly, and we were talking before about that show up rate. One great way to do that is to even have them put a deposit down. Let's say you're getting really busy in your business. Um, you could, for sure, link in a custom link to your payment gateway, whether it's PayPal or Stripe or another option, and collect payment for the event, even if it's just a token fee of $10. Okay, so back to the question or the point, which is what happens after your invitee makes a booking. So we've got the option to send them to a payment page. Mm. What else? Well, something that we talked about in the first session was perhaps if you have a more lengthy initial consultation form, as per this example, you may want to have that form hosted on a separate page because it might be a little bit like you have too many questions for Calendly to accommodate. So you might redirect your users to that full initial consultation checklist, for example, and have them fill it in and then email it to you before the session. Okay, and what about us as a user? What happens to our Google Calendar after an invitee makes a booking? All right, that's a great question. So we did an example in the first session on booking in a time with Belinda Rothschild. And we can see here, if we go back to our email, that it does send a confirmation email to you if you've booked in. So if you're the actual end user, it will show you. And if you're the person who has um, whose calendar it is, it will turn up as Calendly sending a new event. So it also sends a confirmation email. It just so happens we use the same email address for both in this example. That makes it easy and very confusing, but anyway. Yes. So once <laughs> that uh, confirmation is sent to us there, that also appears in our own Google, 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 Google. Google calendar. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Peter Moriarty about that pronunciation. I know, Google. <laughs> So what happens is not only do you receive that email, which is a great reminder, but also it will pop into your demo company calendar here. And if we have a look, we can see that from 1 o'clock to 1.10, Laurel Gray has booked in an, an initial consultation of 10 minutes. But also through Calendly, it's left a buffer on either side as well for us. Yes, exactly. So notice that it didn't even give us times that were close when we when we attempted to book before, and it should leave you with just enough time there to have lunch, grab a coffee, do whatever you want to do between your appointments. Perfect, so that's what happens after an invitee makes a booking. The next question, how do we add team members and their availability to a single booking calendar? All right, well, once you've gone through the whole process of setting up your account just for you, and again, we do recommend that you just do one test account first, do a test event, maybe use it internally first before you test it out with your customers. 
then you can start to add in your team. So if you're back in Calendly, what you can do is click on the upper right hand corner and then go to where it says users. Okay, and once we click on that, that's going to give us the option to add other users here? Yep. So it says start building your organization and it's free during trial and as low as $8 per month per user thereafter. Great, okay. So how do we add a, add a new user? Well, you just click on the add users button and it <laughs> apparently at Calendly, they want you to add everybody that you know. Sure. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can copy and paste a whole huge list here. Um, or if you just have one person, you can just type it in. Okay. So we have a, a sample account here for John at demo.company. And we'll just put his email address in. Yes. And add user. Okay. So when would we want to be doing this to our Calendly account? So you might consider adding a user to Calendly when you want to for example, give someone more options for booking in with different people and one event. So let's say you are a hairdresser and you're running a salon. You might have more than one person who could take an appointment and you could invite that user and apply multiple people to a single event type, such as a 45 minute hair appointment. And then if one person is busy, it will automatically redirect you to another user. So if you're a sales based business, I guess it's the same thing and you have multiple sales representatives and the new lead doesn't even know who the different sales representatives are, you'd be able to book in with one of them. If you're a financial planner and you had different financial planners, you could book in with any one of the team to get mm. them started, same sort of thing? Yep, exactly. And you remember from our example with Belinda that we do have a unique booking link for Belinda um, because we set it up with her name specifically. But what you could always do if you had an admin account is you could set it up with your business name. So it could be calendly.com forward slash business blueprint, for example. And then underneath that account, you'll be able to um, select anyone within the organization. Or alternatively, if it's just for Belinda, you'll be able to send that specific link just to her times. So when you ask someone else to join the calendar, it automatically adds their availability? Yes, that's right. It will automatically add it once they set up the account. So it's done exactly in the same way as we set up your account in the first video. Great. So link it to your Google Calendar and their availability will be automatically dragged in. That's right. Exactly. So we can see here that we're logged into John at demo.company and he's already received an email from the Calendly team inviting him to simplify his scheduling. So we just scroll down to the bottom and we click accept invitation. And, you know, Calendly is pretty smart. It's going to automatically detect that you're signed in with Google or not automatically detect. <laughs> wow, that was a lie. We'll it's have to click. It's going to give you the option <laughs> to sign in with Google. That's a good yeah, thing. There we that's go. That's right. Um, and again, like we did before, we have to verify the account and get going with our first team member. Okay, great. And that's all quite small on the screen, but it's all very straightforward for people at home who want to do those sorts of things. It's exactly the same as any other Google integration. Yep, exactly. Great. And let's say you have a growing team. When you set up your account, you could, for example, have, um, you know, if, if it's John Doe or a really generic name, you could have, for example, John Business Blueprint if you wanted to use some kind of naming convention with your business name built in, that would be possible. Great, so if you want to integrate the cal the, their calendar into your calendar though, do they have their own separate link? Yes, they do. They have their own separate link for booking. Yes. Up here at the top, so it'll be calendly.com forward slash John Business Blueprint. Um, and people will be able to book in time directly with John, with him creating the To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.